This is video number three of the three-part series on inverses for pre-calculus. And before we start, we're going to review the main um, ideas from parts one and two. Key point number one is inverses have x and y coordinates switched. Key point number two, inverses are reflections across y equals x. Key point number three, if f and g are inverses, then f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. And this is a good time to remind you that you will have a lesson quiz when you come in at the beginning of the next class. It is open note, so as long as you have taken good notes from watching these videos, you should be able to do very well on the lesson quiz. <clears throat> in this lesson, or this uh, video, we're going to just do some practice problems. So I recommend that you look at the practice problem you pause the video, you work it out yourself, and then you resume the video and compare what you did to what I do and make sure you're doing it right. Practice problem number one. We're given a set of points called A, and we're going to find the inverse of A. Answer the question, is A a function? Answer the question, is the inverse a function? And answer the question, should we call the inverse A inverse? So pause and work that out. To find the inverse of A, we're going to switch the coordinates, the X and Y coordinates. So we would get the point 3, 1, the point 9, 6, the point 1, 0, the point 9, negative 3, and the point 90, 12. Is A a function? When you look back at A, do you see any X values that have multiple Y values? We do not. So A is a function. Is the inverse a function? So looking at the inverse, notice that we have the point 9, 6 and the point 9, negative 3. So the input 9 has multiple outputs, which means the inverse is not a function. Should we call the inverse A inverse? We really should only use that notation if it's a function. So no, I'm not going to use that inverse function notation. Okay, let's take a look at practice problem number two. Sketch the inverse of the graph shown and answer the questions, is f of x a function and is the inverse a function? Okay, pause the video and try this yourself. To sketch the graph, I would like to start by putting in the line y equals x. And I would also like to take the points that were plotted and switch their x and y coordinates. So we have the point 0, 1. So I'm going to switch that and plot the point 1, 0. We have the point 2, 4. Switch that and plot the point 4, 2. And we also have the point 0, or excuse me, negative 2, 0. So I'm going to plot 0, negative 2. And you could do this with other points too, even if they weren't big round circles. You could just figure out the coordinates. For example, here's the point. Uh, 1, 2, I could plot the point 2, 1. Okay, then when we draw this, we want to make sure it looks like a reflection across the line y equals x. So, it's kind of a mirror image here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I think that looks pretty good. Is f of x a function? Well, it definitely passes the vertical line test, so I would say yes. Is the inverse a function? We can look at the inverse, and it does look like it passed the vertical line test, so that would also be a yes. But another thing we can do is ask ourselves, is the original passing the horizontal line test? If the original passes the horizontal line test, then its inverse will pass the vertical line test. And that is definitely a yes, so yes to that as well. Practice number three. Find the inverse of m of x equals x plus 2 quantity squared minus 5, where we are on a restricted domain, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. And verify on your graphing calculator. So pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, step 0 of finding an inverse is to rewrite it as y instead of m of x. So I have y equals x plus 2 quantity squared minus 5. Step number one is to then switch x and y. So we have x equals y plus 2 quantity squared minus 5. Step two is then to isolate y. So I'll add 5 to both sides. 
square root both sides. Don't forget plus or minus. And then subtract 2 from both sides. If you want, you could put the y on the left. So y equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of x plus 5. Okay, now before we finish, we should remember that in the original problem, x was greater than or equal to 0. And so for the inverse, we need it to be y is greater than or equal to 0. Excuse me, not 0, negative 2. y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So do I keep the plus or do I keep the minus to make it always greater than or equal to negative 2? Negative 2 plus something would definitely be greater than or equal to negative 2, but negative 2 minus something would make it less than or equal to negative 2. So keep the plus, eliminate the minus, and you get y equals negative 2 plus the square root of x plus 5. And then step number 3 is to rename it. So m inverse of x is negative 2 plus square root of x plus 5. Notice the inverse functions. So in the original function, we had squaring. This has square rooting. In the original function, we had a minus 5 on the outside. This has a plus 5 on the inside. The original function had a plus 2 on the inside. This has a minus 2 on the outside. So all the operations have been switched in order, and the inverse has been done. Verify on graphing calculator. So when I graphed the original parabola, m of x, on the graphing calculator, it didn't restrict the domain for me. So I got the whole um, parabola. So I'm just going to erase part of it, if I can. We want only the part where x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So we don't want this over here. So that is gone. Okay, so what we're looking at is this is the graph of the original m of x. And then this is the graph of the inverse, the square root function. Does look like a square root function, the shape we're used to. And do those look like reflections across the line y equals x that we see there in black? Yes, they do. Practice problem number four. Use composition to verify that f of x and g of x are inverses. So go ahead and pause the video and work on this one. All right, the key is to use composition. And so composition would be f of g of x. We are looking to see that f of g of x equals x if they're inverses, and that g of f of x equals x as well. So f of g of x would put g on the inside, so that would be 3 times, here's g, 1 third x plus 1 third, and then minus 1 to finish off the f function, and distribute the 3, and combine the like terms, and we do get x. g of f of x, we're putting f of x on the inside, inside of g, so we have 1 third, and then here's f, and then finishing off g, we need to add the 1 third, distribute the 1 third, and then combine the like terms, and we get x. So there's our verification or our proof that these are inverses. You can also see you have a multiplied by 3 in one of them, a divided by 3 in one of them. You have a minus 1. And in this one, if I was to factor out the 1 third, you would see a plus 1. So a minus 1 for f, a plus 1 for g. A multiply by 3 for f, a divide by 3 for g. So that feels like inverses to me. All right, that is the end of your practice video.